some red flags to avoid when you're buying a property. Now, if you're purchasing a property, we've got the property itself to look at. We've got the paperwork that goes with the property to look at. And if it's an occupied property, for example, an investment property with tenants, we need to look at the tenants that are the tenancy. So what are the red flags? Well, when we're purchasing a property, looking at the property itself, if we understand property, we, we know what we're looking for, then we can do that inspection ourselves. If we don't really know what we're looking for, we can look around a property, but you don't know whether this is good, this is bad, because you don't have a comparison, you don't have that experience. This is where we should bring somebody a little bit more experienced to come and look at the property. Is there something that might be concerned? Is there some movement on the property? Is there things that are out of shape that, you know, the door doesn't close properly because there's been some movement or, uh, on that property that's caused a problem? Is there an extension that's being built that looks like it's a shoddy extension, probably doesn't comply with regulation and doesn't look like it's being built very well? Are there other issues with the property that are maybe not so obvious, uh, visible? For example, it could be damp. It could be the smell that indicates it could be rot within the wood on the property. It could be Japanese knotweed, which is a plant that literally eats through concrete. So there's things like that that we need to be observant about within the property to make sure that we understand what we're buying. Now, the location of a property is also key. And there's sometimes certain things that can impact a property. A property's value. So for example, if you're very close to an electricity pilot, if you're close to an electricity power station, if you're close to an old uh, mine for coal mine, for example, all of these things can bring down the value of a property. If you're very close to uh, an industrial estate that's very noisy or dusty, for example, these things can impact the value of that property because it limits the number of people that will want to purchase that property or it limits the ability to be able to borrow money against that property, i.e. take on a mortgage to do the uh, purchase. So they're the things around the property, a few things to be mindful of. Then when it comes to the paperwork side, generally your solicitor will do this work for you. But things to be mindful of is firstly, make sure that the person selling the property, if you're speaking, for example, to the owner directly, is the owner and they are who they say they are. And that's who you're buying the property from. But unfortunately, there's a lot of fraud that happens as well, where someone can sell a house that they don't actually own to somebody, take the money, then disappear. And then you realize, actually, I think I bought a house, but actually you haven't because somebody else owns it. So you can't buy it. And the person that sold it to you, you thought it was the owner, but actually wasn't the owner. So you just need to be mindful of who we are speaking to. Generally, the solicitors will take care of this when you're using the solicitor, but we just want to be a little bit observant uh, on these things. And the the title documents are the, uh, which is if you like, the, the deeds on the property, they sometimes will have certain kind of covenants and restrictions on them that we need to be aware of what they are. And sometimes these are very, very old. There might be a hundred years ago where the house was built. There's a restriction put on that you can't keep chickens in the back. That's probably not going to make much an impact for you. Other times it could be there's a re, uh, there's a, a covenant on the property saying that only single occupation can be at the property, meaning that only an individual or family can live there. You can't have multiple occupants. You can't divide the property up. And it might be a large house and your intention is to convert it to flats or turn it into a HMO. But, you know, you don't want to discover that after you purchase a property, you purchase a property, you think, okay, right, let's start work now. And then later on realize there's a problem. You want to know earlier on if that's your intention. There isn't anything there that might prevent or prohibit that from happening. Also, local rules and regulations, for example, Article 4. This is when you're doing your uh, your administrative due diligence and understanding paperwork-wise, is everything in order or is there something that could cause us a potential problem? If that's a red flag that we need to be aware of. And thirdly, I mentioned if it's an investment property, it might be one that already has a tenant that's paying an income. So we just need to assess and check who is the tenant that's there. It could be a commercial tenant, it could be a residential tenant. Who is it that's there? What information do we have about them? What due diligence was done on the person that's in that property or is hiring that lease or signed that AST agreement? What credit checks, etc., have been done? What sureties are in place in terms of deposits, etc., guarantees, guarantors? These things need to be checked to see if they're in order. And also the actual agreement itself that's been signed. What is that agreement? Is it correct? Is there any issues with it? Uh, is it uh, on any kind of reduced rent for a period of time? Is there anything that, uh, for example, is in there that meaning that the, the payments might change or the tenancy might come to an end in an abrupt manner? These are a few things that will all be red flags. And often when we don't know what we're looking for, we don't know what we don't know. And this is where we need to rely on experts uh, such as your solicitor and other people that may be advising, a surveyor, for example, to look for certain things to help us in order to make the right decisions. As you become more experienced, you start recognizing these things. But basic red flags, we should be looking for these ourselves rather than just relying on somebody else to find them for us.